Teaching 279, The Great Book of True Life, Volume 10. Your journey through life is filled with suffering. As you face each hardship, you hear the voice of your conscience telling you that you are still far from fulfilling the divine law of your father. Thus, you feel weak and discouraged. The spirit intuitively knows that long ago it separated from the father. It knows that it still needs to journey a long path before returning to the Father. Thus, to communicate with the Father, the Spirit prays, knowing that prayer brings the Spirit comfort, healing, and love. I bless you when you pray. The more spiritual your prayer, the more spiritual peace you will feel. Truly, you will not be able to feel my spiritual presence in your heart if you believe that you need to kneel before material images of God to communicate with the Father. Blessed are those who have believed without having seen. I say this once again because the ones who closes his eyes to the material things of this world will be able to receive those things that are of the spiritual. The one who has faith in my spiritual presence will rejoice in my presence. How long will man deprive his spirit of the joy of feeling my presence through spiritual prayer? He will only be able to feel my presence when he communicates from his spirit to my spirit, for my light will illuminate the life of humanity so he will know the truth and understand its errors. Now is the time for prayer and meditation. Your prayer must be free of all idolatry and fanaticism. And your meditation should be filled with spiritual tranquility and careful analysis of my divine word. One can pray and meditate at any location or hour of the day. My teachings never designated a specific time to pray and meditate. Why do you look for specific places to pray when your spirit is greater than the earth in which it dwells? Why do you limit me to the material temples and material images of God that man has created, knowing that I am present throughout the universe? Man experiences ordeals in life because he lacks spiritual enlightenment and does not know how to pray. This is why I say to you that it is necessary for all of humanity to become familiar with my teachings. You are now living at the beginning of the spiritual era. Therefore, it should not seem strange that I often talk to you of things that correspond to the Spirit. No one should be surprised with my new teachings because the prophets in the first era and Christ in the second era clearly announced this era. Many throughout the world are aware that this is the time when those prophecies will be fulfilled. However, I say to you that not everyone has understood the true meaning of those scriptures because they have given them a material interpretation. Their interpretation is similar to the material interpretation that the Jews gave in the past as they awaited the coming of the Messiah and his kingdom. Verse 11. When I was on earth, I said, my kingdom is not of this world. Also, I said, I go to prepare a place for you, for where I am, you may also be. Disciples, in my doctrine, I have spoken of the spiritual life, a life that is superior. I also told you what path you need to follow to achieve that superior existence. I revealed my word, not only through the laws that I gave you during the first era, but also through the prophecies given by my messengers who spoke of the spiritual life. Why did you insist on giving a material interpretation of those prophecies? In the past, I spoke to humanity using symbols and parables because man was not spiritually prepared to receive my teachings in a more elevated manner. Thus, it is necessary to correctly interpret the spiritual meaning of those symbols and parables so that man can discover the true meaning. Again, I say to you, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is of the spiritual because my essence is spiritual. Since you are children of the essence, you are also a part of that spiritual kingdom. To reach that kingdom, I have given you a doctrine that contains all that is necessary for you to overcome the trials of life and step by step reach that spiritual life. My people, you should meditate and pray so that you will not fall into confusion because you are the seed of a new era.
You have arrived at the foot of the invisible mountain to hear the voice of your father. Spirits are arriving from a state of spiritual darkness to join the people of God. Among this multitude are the seeds of Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Elijah, and all those who honored the name of their people and glorified the name of their Lord with their deeds. A sweet and comforting voice has come to awaken you and to summon you to the kingdom of spiritual enlightenment and truth. If you choose to continue disobeying my law and staying in your spirit, my voice will then become a voice of justice. I say to the one who is obedient and humble, continue to follow the true path because you will receive many blessings and will be able to offer many blessings to your brethren. I say to the one who is stubborn and disobedient, if you do not take advantage of this period to stop sinning and living in a state of spiritual ignorance, the time will pass without you ever knowing the Lord's revelations during this period. You will not know the teachings and gifts I reveal to his people. Truly, the day will come when every being will be saved and become spiritually elevated. But woe to the beings who delays that day. Woe to the beings who ignores the opportunity to evolve spiritually, preferring to dedicate himself to the insignificant things of this world. He does not know how long he will have to wait to receive the same opportunity again, nor does he know the bitterness of his restitution. The father is not punishing nor being vengeful toward that being, but his justice is strict and unyielding. Now that I am manifesting myself to this multitude, I ask you, do you perhaps know whether you have wasted previous opportunities to fulfill your mission? Do you know how long your spirit has awaited this new opportunity to fulfill a past mission? What do you know about the past history of your spirit, its spiritual destiny, debts, missions, and restitution? You know nothing about those things, and that is why you should not prevent your spirit from following the path of spiritual perfection. Do not tempt your spirit to become attracted to material things of this world. It needs to journey through a difficult path with spiritual goals and ideals. These are the beginning days of an era that will be filled with enlightenment of humanity. This era has appeared amidst a storm of chaos, confusion, suffering and shattering events. However, the dense clouds of that storm will disappear and the truth will shine in all its majesty. Today, you are living in darkness, but spiritual enlightenment will follow. The rays of spiritual enlightenment are penetrating through the chaos, touching hearts and awakening spirits. Those who have been touched and moved by that ray of light have detained themselves along their path to ask, who are you? I have responded to them. I am the light of the world and of eternity. I am love and truth. I am the one who promised you in the second era that I will return. The one who you have referred to as the divine word of God. They will react as did Saul on the road to Damascus, overcoming their pride and arrogance to humbly tell me, my Lord and Father, forgive me, because I now understand that I was persecuting you without being aware of it. When that occurs, those individuals will then be my followers. However, none of my new disciples have shown the same high spiritual elevation that was achieved by Paul. Although he initially persecuted me, he later truly demonstrated his great love for me. My new disciples are still learning to imitate my apostles from the second era who fulfilled their spiritual mission on earth by practicing great deeds of love. Those apostles followed the path outlined by the divine master who they greatly loved and for whom they died. At times I have spoken in great details of events from the past so that you will learn from the great examples that were set by others. Learn to attract the spiritual essence from the examples which is immortal and unchangeable. My heart is open and ready to listen to all your requests, concerns, and intimate secrets. I am your father, teacher, friend, doctor, and advisor. Tell me about your sorrows and dry your tears. Tell me about your hopes and desires and allow me to be your trusted friend. Pray, my children, because through prayer you can acquire wisdom, health, and strength. I want you to become my true disciple and to be aware of your destiny. Thus, this will help your spirit to evolve and to avoid making mistakes while you are on earth. 
The one who prays is not afraid of the trials or ordeals in life because he is always in a state of spiritual peace. When all of you live in that manner, you will form a sanctuary of love for your father. Inside that sanctuary, you will be signing a spiritual hymn that will speak of brotherhood, harmony, and spiritual evolution. You will find that my teachings will prepare you for future ordeals and will enable you to find solutions to them. Those who are studying my teachings today will become my disciples, and tomorrow they will become teachers. Thus, there is much to learn today. I will prepare your hearts, your minds, and purify you before I send you to offer testimony of my arrivals during this era. My new teachings have not yet spread throughout the world. Before they do, I will send indications of my new arrivals to the different nations. The spiritual world is fulfilling its mission of awakening mankind and making man aware that spiritual life truly exists. I have manifested myself fully among the multitude who has witnessed my manifestation during this era. Unlike those preceding signs that I sent to other nations, I have manifested myself to this multitude through human spokesmen and have given you my teachings in a clear manner. This was done so that these teachings could prepare you to communicate with me from spirit to spirit. Truly, my words through the human spokesman have given you many profound teachings. I have come to confirm the revelations that were given to man in the past and to give you new revelations. I have spoken to your spiritual destiny, the evolution and restitution of the spirit, and the law of reincarnation. Also, I have spoken to the different hardships that man had to endure in order to learn and evolve. I have symbolized them with a book of seven seals. I have informed you that this is the third era in which I have manifested myself spiritually because you were ready to feel my spiritual presence. Furthermore, I say to you that my laws can be summarized in two commandments. Love your father and love one another. Meditate, and you will realize that I have not given you signs of my new arrivals, but rather a great manifestation of my love. The people receiving signs of my arrivals are those who still carry the promise of my return in their hearts. They look to heavens for answers and observe every event, hoping that the arrival of the divine master is near. Oh, how little the world cares for my new manifestations, and how numerous are those who are unaware of it. Only a few on earth were truly prepared for my return. Many are awaiting my return, yet not all perceive my true spiritual presence during this time. Some, because of their old beliefs, think I will return as man. Others believe that I will return in a manner visible to the material eye. Only a few are aware of the true nature of my return, which is spiritual. Some ask and wonder, what form will I take? What day and time will I arrive? And where will I appear? Whereas others who are without thinking of material forms, times and places say to themselves, the master is already among us and his spiritual enlightenment surrounds us. When this message reaches all individuals, it will be a gift of joy for some. However, others will reject it because it is not in agreement with what they believe nor was it manifested in the form they expected. My beloved people, think of all those individuals who reject this message, yet still await my return. While they suffer wondering when I will return, you rejoice listening to my word every day. However, when this manifestation ends, you will have the great responsibility of awakening mankind. Awaken, my children, and go enlighten your brethren. This is what you now need to do. I will present myself to everyone spiritually upon a cloud, as previously promised, and everyone will perceive me. Why do you believe that my spiritual return has no purpose? Remember that after I was crucified and died, I continued to communicate spiritually with my disciples. 48. What would have happened to them if I had not communicated spiritually with them? That communication strengthened their faith and encouraged them to fulfill their missions. My disciples became very sad and shed many tears after my departure. Though they prayed frequently, they were overcome by feelings of guilt and fear. They remembered that one disciple sold me, another denied me, and that many of them abandoned me at the hour of my death. How could they be disciples of the divine master who was truly perfect? How would they have the strength and courage to confront their brethren who had so many diverse customs and beliefs? It was then that my spirit presented itself among them to relieve their pain, to strengthen their faith, and to fill their hearts with my doctrine of love. 
Although I appeared human to my disciples, my presence was spiritual. Behold, what great influence those manifestations had among my disciples. Truly I tell you that today I have come again to humanize my spirit as I did in the past. But man is now more spiritually evolved. Thus, everyone is able to feel my presence, although they feel it in a subtle and intangible manner. There is no need for you to perceive me with your physical eyes to verify that the divine master is among you. The spirit has superior senses that see, feel, and comprehend spiritual things. It is through those senses that I want you to perceive my presence. Once you are no longer able to listen to this word, you will feel helpless and sad. You will experience remorse because of your lack of love. It is then when you will hear me say deep within your heart, I am with you. Continue your journey and do not be afraid, for you are never alone. Who, other than I, inspired the disciples in the second era as they continued their journey on earth without the divine master? Do you not admire what each disciple was able to accomplish? As I say to you that those disciples had weaknesses, as do all human beings, but they developed great faith and love for their brethren. They did not fear being left on the earth as sheep among wolves, continually being persecuted and ridiculed by others. They had the power to perform miracles and knew how to use that gift to convert their brethren to the truth. Blessed are those who heard what the Messiah in the flesh had said through the lips of my apostles, because they presented my doctrine in a true and pure manner. This is why those individuals who heard my apostles speak felt in their spirits the presence of the Lord. They experienced a sensation never felt before, a sensation of power, wisdom, and divine greatness. Those apostles were a worthy example. They were poor and humble fishermen from Galilee who were transformed into spiritual fishermen because of their great love for their brethren. They were able to spiritually enlighten their brethren and cause cities and empires to change with the teachings that they had learned from the Messiah. Through their great determination and sacrifice, they were able to convert cities and empires to the doctrine of the word of the Most High God and to establish spiritual peace on earth. The kings of earth, as well as the beggars, experienced the peace during that period of true spirituality. The period of spiritual peace among mankind was only temporary. I, who know all things, announced and promised that I would return because I knew that humanity would need me once again. I knew that with each passing generation, man would falsify my doctrine, change my law, and distort the truth. I knew that man would forget my promise that I would return and cease to perceive one another as brethren, killing each other with cruel, cowardly, and perverse weapons. This is the period that I promised to return. I am with you now. Do not judge the manner in which I chose to manifest myself, for it is not the world that should judge me, but rather I that should judge humanity. This is the period of that judgment. I have come to establish a kingdom in the heart of humanity. It is a spiritual kingdom, not a material kingdom as many had expected. The strength of that kingdom will originate from love and justice and not from the material powers of earth. I observe that some individuals are surprised listening to me speak in this manner, and I ask them, why do you always dress me in silk clothes, jewels, and gold? Why do you want my kingdom to be from this material world when I have told you that it is not? I am bringing you new teachings so that you will learn to live a life full of spirituality. That is the true life destined by God for mankind. I have told you that spirituality does not mean superstitious beliefs, nor religious fanaticism, nor supernatural practices. Spirituality means harmony between the material body and the spirit, obedience to the divine and the human laws, simplicity and purity in one's life, complete and deep faith in Father, And the joy and willingness to serve God by loving your brethren, those are the ideals of spiritual and moral perfection. As I present to you the purity of my doctrine, you will feel that your sins are more evident. 
Therefore, my disciples, I am ready to forgive all of your faults if you are now prepared to listen to the voice of your conscience and to correct your errors. You will need amends for the time you have lost and to demonstrate the purity of my doctrine through your deeds of love and charity. A multitude of people that is spiritually elevated and that truly follows my divine laws needs to arise on earth. They will be able to prove to humanity that it is not impossible to achieve spirituality. They will teach humanity that a spiritual rebirth of the flesh is not a sacrifice and that one does not need to renounce his life on earth to spiritually serve God. You can teach my doctrine of love to the world because of the experience you have attained in your long journey to spiritual evolution. To learn about spirituality, you have traveled many paths. In the past, you practiced idolatry and needed material symbols because you were unable to feel my presence. You felt you needed ceremonies to honor me. But when you reached a crossroad in your life and did not know what path to follow, you began to listen to the voice of the Divine Master, who came once again to teach you the true path. Do you not believe that all of your past experiences will help you to understand as well as to encourage your brethren? I have already told you that the struggle would be difficult because each one believes that his religion is perfect, as well as the manner in which he worships our Father in heaven, hallowed be his name. However, I say to you that if a man's religion and worship were perfect, there would have been no reason for me to manifest myself during this era. I have brought you a doctrine that is truly spiritual because I observe that your worship is filled with idolatry. I also observe that your fanaticism has caused you to be ignored and full of negative emotions. I hold a sword of light and love in my right hand. For I am the warrior and king who has come to destroy all suffering, deception, and evil. When the battle has ended and man learns to pray and live in harmony, his spirit will discover my presence of infinite light and eternal peace. I will then tell him, This is my kingdom and I am your king. I created you and I exist so that I may reign. Behold how my conquests differ from those of man. To reign in your hearts, I became man and lived among you rather than use force or fear. I not only kissed and washed your feet, but I also became your victim. I gave myself to you. Now I tell you, in the end, you will surrender yourselves to me. My peace be with you.